Good morning, everyone. My name is Philip Ng. I'm a professor of, uh, in the School of uh, Management in the Center for Business, George Brown College. Uh, with me today is Peter Wittes, my colleague. Peter is a professor and program coordinator in the School of Marketing in the Center for Business. As an award-winning professor of marketing, Peter is very often sought after for his professional commentary uh, by uh, mainstream publications, such as Maclean's, New York Times, Globe and Mail, Toronto Star, and BNN Bloomsburg. Uh, in the business world, Peter's work has been recognized by Nielsen, Walmart USA, Mondelez, IMG, and MLSE, to name a few organizations. Please welcome Peter Wittes, Professor of Marketing. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the seminar. And Philip, it's great to be here. Oh, before I, I, I start, uh, folks, if you do have any questions, uh, please use the uh, uh, Q&A uh, box as opposed to the chat, please. Thanks very much. Please continue, Peter. So welcome everyone today. Uh, it's, it's exciting to be taking part in another George Brown Center for Business first uh, in our virtual open house. Uh, very excited to be a part of your journey in determining the direction you want to go and taking that next big step in your career progression. Um, and I'm here to support you and guide you on any specific uh, questions or big picture uh, discussion points that you may have on the sport and event program. What's really interesting is I'm actually a graduate of the George Brown Sport and Event Marketing Program. Graduated, every time I say this, I feel like I'm getting that much older, but it was in the late 90s when dial-up internet was just becoming a thing. So doing something like this was a little bit uh, out, of, out of the equation of what the internet was at the time. But I'm a graduate of George Brown College Sport and Event Program. And I can tell you unequivocally in coming into the classroom with a really student-centric lens and an alumni, so to speak, um, the program that we offer at the college for over 25 years has set the foundation um, for innovation in the sport and event industry across Canada. Uh, our program, uh, which runs for uh, one year postgraduate, uh, eight months in the classroom, so four months in the classroom to start, second semester, four months in the classroom, taking really specified courses that set you up in an applied academic context using experiential learning as a foundation to then help um, propel you into work term opportunities that uh, we work with in the context of our partnerships with sport and event industry uh, members in various capacities that being the agency world, the uh, brand property client world, and in the not-for-profit space with the underpins of a blend of sport business, entertainment business, and not-for-profit, all holistically getting you ready to begin your career start in the sport and event space. Um, one of our um, proud uh, entities that's a sub-brand, so to speak, if I use some marketing lingo, is the Five to Watch uh, Canadian Sport Business Awards platform. That is something that we run in tandem with the Globe and Mail and TSN as key partners as an award show experience that really helps bring together the community of sport and event marketers across Canada each and every year, and subsequently strengthening our alumni base, which at the heart of this program and head of this program now, as the uh, professor and coordinator myself, we really strive to continue to build forward so you can thrive within a very evolving sport and event industry. And one that gets me that much more excited these days, knowing that yes, we are in a pandemic and yes, we are very much in a time of change, not just in academia, but throughout the industry of business, very capacities. But, you know, it's funny, I, I, before the, the discussion started today, you know, Phil and I were talking about one of the best innovators in, in the sport, uh, sporting world, which is a little past your time, but I'm sure you remember the, the gentleman by the name of Wayne Gretzky. And one of his powerful quotes that he makes as an innovator in hockey is go to where the puck is going not to where the puck is and I can with unequivocally say with our program and what we're doing collectively 
in this uh, postgraduate learning journey is the journey towards going to where the puck is going. So as this industry is in a time of change, there's never been a more exciting time to join our ship, to get on this trip and succeed in the sport and event field. So excited to have you here and here to be a sounding board as you continue to um, carve out um, your postgraduate uh, decisions in putting your career forward with George Brown College. Thanks, Philip. Great job, Peter. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions to ask Peter? So here's a question from Mercedes. Uh, what type of roles would we perform after graduation? Thank you, Mercedes. That's a great question. And certainly that one that dawned in my mind back in 1997 as I proceeded uh, through the program. So the type of roles that you can expect is coordinator, entry level, um, junior level management roles at organizations like Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, like not-for-profits, um, like the Heart and Stroke Foundation, like uh, major sponsorship and integrated communication agencies, um, like X XMC or Wasserman. There's a number and a growing number of um, roles in this space that are actually going to, I think, get that much more robust as virtual event experiences and the digitization of sport and event contact becomes that much more prominent in the arsenals of sport and event marketer based organizations. So, but net net coordinator junior roles that you come into and then grow within the respective organizations you're hired into. So the other question that uh, comes in from, this is from, uh, let me just move my screen here. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, is there an expectation uh, that uh, classes in the fall will be done in person? Great question, Matthew. And, and rest assured that it's a question we get quite a bit. Um, at the moment, we take like every other um, public or private sector based industry our guidance from um, first and foremost the college and secondly the government of Ontario and while we're working towards um, being flexible in the context of of being in class on campus for the fall or January the curriculum and the way it's delivered in a truly experiential and amplified digital light um, draws on the notion that whether you're in person or not in person, the value you're receiving in the learning experience of which you're getting is very seamless. So yes, safe to say it'd be great right now if I was live with Mr. Phil and we were together in a, in a, in a physical context, but um, at the moment to have a firm piece of um, direction on that, I, I just can't say, especially since yesterday we had some new news coming out from the government. So we have to adhere to those guidelines as we go forward, just like every other business or public institution in Ontario. Hope that answers your question. Good answer, thanks Pete. Uh, Natasha asks the following question. What is the course load like? How many hours of class time are expected? Thanks, Natasha. It is a full-time program, um, one year. I almost think of it very much like an applied um, learning boot camp um, that really helps you polish your undergraduate credentials. Um, your course load is um, first semester, you would be taking um, a full course load. So your full-time student, three hours per class is the lecture time window. Um, often um, the way the schedulers break it out is you would have one day off during the week where you don't have classes, but that would give you a window to collaborate with your teams and working on assignments or study or network um, in building your uh, industry relationships. So it's a very, very, you know, it's demanding one year program. I we're not a grad, you know, master's program, but the demands and the learning that you get is very practical. It's very hands-on. So it's very different than more of the theoretical that one one would receive in an undergraduate learning experience for four, for three or four years at university. So it's very, it, it's hard to give you definitive linear direction on how much time you'd be spending outside of the classroom. But I can say 
on a per week basis, you would probably have 15 hours of classes each semester, but then layer in your group work you do outside, plus you're being that much zeroly focused on, or focused, excuse me, 100% on driving your career um, relationships forward into your work term. It, it's, it's a very, very demanding program, but very, very fulfilling. If, if I may add as well, Peter, uh, the you. idea about uh, doing uh, remote learning um, is more intensive. Uh, the time that's taken is more intensive than in-class or in-person learning. Yes. Uh, and that's because there's reading involved uh, and even just type in your answers takes a long time. That's just verbally citing your uh, answer. Absolutely. Well said, Philip. Thank you. So uh, the next question comes from Monica, which is, do you have any experience in the non not-for-profit sector? So yes, I do. Um, not working specifically for a not-for-profit organization, but working as an advisor in different capacities in my career. Um, one I'll throw out there is back in my days when I worked with um, Michelle Carter, uh, mother of Vincent Lamar Carter, former Toronto Raptor and founder of the Embassy of Hope Foundation. So I did some work with them during my time at Cadbury. But within our team, as well, we have um, instructors who we often refer to as dual professionals who have one foot in the professional space working for as an executive at organizations and one foot in the classroom. So on our team, we have um, a course that is specific in your second semester, which is a not-for-profit cause-related marketing piece of curriculum. And that is steered by instructors that are working in an executive director capacity very much for not-for-profit organizations. So we really blend that into the curriculum in a really applied way. So the answer, the short answer is yes. And the, to build off that though too, you get it both in the classroom from a not-for-profit training experience, hands-on, and as well as you look at your work term journey, we are very much um, in concert with partnerships in industry to ensure that those that want to pursue a not-for-profit opportunity in a work term capacity have that um, uh, menu to search from. Thank Super. you. Thanks. Uh, the next question comes from Vandana. What is the scope of job opportunities in the event and uh, scope market after COVID-19 pandemic? That could be about an hour. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best. Um, that's a big question. Um, it's I would say this and having now for a year been, um, have pivoted from being 100% or 100 in a physical, classroom setting to work to teaching virtual and watching our industry evolve. Um, and I say watching our industry evolve because for folks on this call, I think one needs to not look any further than if they are a sport and entertainment fan that the movie business has shifted to more online and in-home capa content capacity, as well as the sport business as we watch leagues like the NBA, NHL, um, and a major league baseball restage how they deliver an event experience. The long and the short of it is, um, and I'll just use one organization as an example, Rogers Sportsnet right now is hiring like crazy because they are in, in reinventing and recontextualizing their entire thinking around sport and event delivery in the context of the National Hockey League and how they do sports. So it's not a very, I can't give you a very linear answer on your question, but what I can say is we anticipate at the junior and more entry level um, level in this marketplace, there to be continued uptick of opportunities because of the expansion of the way that virtual content and virtual delivery is only going to augment the in-sport event experience. Okay, hope that helps. Good. I'm just doing a time check right now, Peter. It's okay. uh, 1044. So we're about halfway into this webinar. Okay. Uh, in the meet, so I'm just going to maybe uh, have people uh, load up their questions in the Q&A. That way okay. I, can, I can answer them. So I'm going to group two of the following questions together. Uh, okay. Natasha asks, where have your students completed their placements? While Christopher asks, what organizations are typically interested in George Brown grads with regards to hiring interns? Great questions. And I can tell you that we are partners and have organizations who have sought after our students who are the best of the best in industry. So we have a large contingent of alumni who work at the Canadian Olympic Committee, 
Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, Wasserman Media Group, IMG, T1 Marketing Agency, Canadian Tire, Moosehead Breweries. I could go on and on. In the not-for-profit space, we have many folks who've gone to work at the Lung Association, the Heart and Stroke Foundation. We have graduates at the National Football League. We have graduates at EA Sports in Vancouver. We have a number of graduates who are at the cross section and intersection of arts, entertainment and sport and not for profit because that holistic blend of industries now is coming together that much more in a holistic way to deliver career opportunities for graduates because that's built into our curriculum. So we are very in demand. We have a very, excuse me, in demand um, internship and co-op work opportunity base of partners, as well as organizations that have been with us for a long time that have helped um, recruit or look to recruit to our grads because our alumni are so prominent in industry. And they often come back and look for alumni to come work for them at the organizations they lead. Excellent, thank you. Uh, this one's a, a, probably a, a question that's on many students' minds, uh, and it has to uh, has to do with uh, work-life balance. So here's a question from an anonymous attendee: Would this program be manageable while working full-time elsewhere? Great question. I would say yes, it is. But like anything, <clears throat> excuse me, like anything in managing a career, it requires juggling balls. And I'll use the sport analogy of juggling balls and I could grab my football back here and juggle it as I speak. But the, the short answer is yes, it is. Is it demanding, because, that much more demanding because you're carrying a job at the same time simultaneously? Yes, it is. Um, I'm, at the, I'm at the beginnings of starting a, a PhD um, on top of what I do for a full-time job. So that's layered in that much more work for me academically. So the shorter answer is yes, it is manageable, but from a demands perspective, your workload will be that much higher. However, what my counsel is to any student in this light is to really think through, it's a one-year commitment. So if there's any way to look to scale back what you're doing from a work perspective, as best you can, we, can, we recognize now that everyone's carrying side hustle jobs often to complement their main career anchor or their main income anchor. Having said that, this is the year and this is the commitment that you can really get that best return on investment in your dollar to take a year to really invest in you to grow your career for the long term. So it's having that long term big picture mindset and in investing in you. So the short answer is yes, but there's more demands if you go that route. And so if I may add as well for some of my other students, there's research that says that if you uh, uh, you're a student and you work more than 15 to 20 hours per week, it can impact your, your academic, uh, qual the quality of your academic studies. Yep. Something okay. has to give, to Phil's point. Something has to give, and that's just like anything in life. Good. Arsh asks the following questions. Uh, are there any skills that we should focus on enhancing before starting the program? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. There's so many different answers. I think my big answer is no, there aren't anything. I want you to be you and bring you and your background and your, your blend of undergrad uh, experiences to the classroom. The only uh, guidance I would give here is to recognize it is a postgraduate program. It is a really professionalization of getting you ready for your career start. So having a good grasp and understanding of what it, it means to bridge from being an undergraduate student to get closer to being an industry executive at your craft, any supplemental reading you can do to better understand what it means to be a leader in business, generally speaking, an entry level leader in business, and as well, um, grasping when you have time, I don't want you to do any homework before you start working in the classroom, but is maybe perhaps really get smart at understanding big trends in the industry and doing your homework at becoming a student of what sport and event marketing is. Every, every day I watch a commercial or take in a, a piece of uh, marketing content that really helps me learn. And I'm not you know, setting aside, you know, dedicated time to grow my mindset. So I'd, I'd encourage you to be open to learning that way before you start. But there's nothing I can say without having your undergraduate degree um, or your 
three-year advanced diploma in an Ontario college, coupled with you being you and bringing your best you experience to the classroom to help yourself learn and grow with us that I can advise. So we have the next few series of questions, Peter, that have to do with uh, getting a job afterwards. So I'll try, to, I'll try to group them together. So this one really would uh, go in the terms of uh, what's the scope of job opportunities in event and smart, uh, smart marketing um, after the uh, co uh, COVID pandemic? I think you might address that one very briefly. Uh, are there opportunities to network with industry partners throughout the whole program? And do you help with uh, securing work placement? Uh, the other one has to do with uh, the timing of internship. I'll, I'll maybe put that in another category. Um, and how about this one? This one's about co-op. Uh, and yeah, so I'll put that one with the uh, uh, internship uh, uh, category. So how about those two questions, first of all? Perfect. I, I would say, so the answer is yes. In fact, I would argue that your opportunity to network and pursue relationship building, although we can't be in person right now um, because of the COVID situation, is that much more expanded through the pandemic. Illustration we have a class that's embedded into your first semester called um, seminar series, which is actually like attending a three hour conference each week. That's really a captivative learning experience of industry guest speakers coming in to share best practices from their career journey and open your eyes as a, from an alumni perspective as to um, reinforcing where you can go and, and networking with them. What's happened through COVID, because we're so virtually connected now across borders that are not limited to within the confines of a physical classroom, is we have speakers often um, giving guest talks in our speaker series who might be in another country, who might be working in the United States for the National Football League. We had the vice president of marketing last semester, I believe, from the Kansas City Chiefs uh, attend and give a guest talk. So there's actually more networking opportunities coming out through virtual class components within um, your learning journey. From a networking perspective, it, as it always is, and we'll help you learn how to network. And I'm not a big fan of that word, just so everyone knows. I really believe it's all about building personal relationships and win, 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 triple win engagements with yourself, your, your, your business colleagues in industry and your academic teachers and having that as a holistic bridge. So it is there, it's always been there. It's never been stronger, I think now because of the COVID pandemic and the empathy and um, a, a, a constant um, care that's come to the forefront that much more from industry personnel. So I think it's actually been tightened in certain ways uh, from a networking perspective through the pandemic. And certainly the opportunities for career um, post-graduation are like they are in any industry right now across the economy, public sector and private sector. It's, it's a fluid situation where it's up, down, it's across, sideways. But I can say with my head over my heart and head and, and hand on head that the opportunities are evolving to a more um, extended zones because of virtual content being layered that much into what an event experience means. So if I was going to this program at this time, 20 years ago, fast forward to today, I would feel very optimistic to be a part of the change that is manifesting in not only sport and event industry, but the state of business um, internationally in Canada, and how we at George Brown are leading that curve with how you can be set up for success in starting your careers. Our professorship team and our industry relationships, we are here to help coach you, advise you. We don't get you the, we don't place you into co-op opportunities directly. We coach you and mentor you and guide you with opportunities that are in front of you. And then you in part of your learning curve learns how to seize the moment and professionalize and take your step into industry with us right behind you, cheering you on and supporting you every step of the way. 
But I can reinforce the idea about getting speakers because I used to teach the uh, speaker series as well. Uh, and uh, back then it was way before pandemic, way before remote learning. And uh, it was a challenge sometimes trying to get speakers in because um, the, they're, they, they're professionals and, and they would uh, have to sync in with uh, our class time with their schedule as well. So uh, doing it online was ideal. Yep. And, that, and that's great. So the next questions uh, come from Dylan uh, and also from, let's see now, from uh, Virag, uh, which talks about internship. So I'll just read Dylan's first. When does the internship work experience term begin and how many hours are we expected to complete in the term? Whereas Virag asks, will the co-op opportunities later turn into full-time employment jobs? And the, and the answer, so so I'll, I'll do the quick one, um, which is on can, can, I think can is the key language. Can your work term experience translate into a full-time job upon graduation? Yes, it can. Is it guaranteed to? Do I have an exact piece of data to support what percentage does? I don't, because it depends on the dynamics of the organization you're working for. Are you working for a corporation? Are you working for a mid-sized company? Are you working in an, in an economic environment where, where things are, you know, if, if you're working for Sportsnet right now in an internship capacity, there'd be a better opportunity for probably your job, your co-op to turn into an actual employment thing. So there's a lot of factors there, but I can, I can say unequivocally that yes, it can happen. And if it doesn't happen within your current placement, the window of networking and relationships you build through that placement can, can spin into other opportunities um, organically. So the other piece is in terms of the co-op or work term experience starts at the end of your first eight months. So first eight months, you're in the classroom, four months, first semester, four months, second semester. And then on that way, you're laddering up and bridging your skill set to be ready to be in a work term experience. So it's after eight months. And while I don't um, have my colleague um, and our, our Don of co-op, I call him Mr. Don Christie with me, we're looking at 300 plus hours with specific curriculum and, or not curriculum, excuse me, criteria um, that work uh, term partners adhere to, to make sure that there is that adherence to um, you achieving the hours you need to get to graduate. So we have a very systematic discipline in place to set you up for the organic work experience to get you ready for industry. Hope that answers your question. Good. We've got a few more questions here. So, uh, so I'll ask that uh, yeah. you finish typing your, your questions in here. Uh, just uh, 30 seconds left. But in the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll give these answers to or these questions to Peter. Yeah. Uh, uh, this one's from Renata, who asks, uh, it's difficult to find a job in the sports uh, area right now. Yep. Um, how, how bad is it or how, how tough is it? How challenging is it? Wow, that's another hour. Um, <laughs> um, I would say, I would reframe the term from challenge to there's tremendous opportunity. Um, we're in a time of change and I see lots of notes here on, you know, MLS excitement, TFC, you know, Toronto International Entertainment Music. We have existing relationships that are coming back from a traditional co-op perspective and expanding into other consulting opportunity assignments. So it's a big zone when it comes to your work term um, opportunities that translate into employment that is fulfilled with organizations like Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, like MLS and TFC. And the opportunities for you when you graduate, yes, it's 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 challenging for everyone in the economy right now. But I really would encourage you to to turn that challenge mindset into opportunity because you're entering a field that you're so passionate about, and the skills are so transferable that you get within this program to take them wherever you go in building your marketing career. So I wouldn't limit your mind to I need to work for sport organizations. I would limit you know, change your thinking to think, I want to be really good in partnership marketing and with sport and events being a catalyst to help me get there. So I think that you're set up for success from a transferable skill set perspective like no other in this program. And I can say that as someone who with 25 plus years now and my career pedigree that supports that touch point having come from this program as a teacher now. So I hope that answers your question. 
Good. Thanks, Peter. So I'm going to stop the uh, Q&A right now. So uh, that way Peter can finish answering the uh, existing questions. So question number one, have you ever had a student go to the U.S. for placement? Uh, if not, uh, would that be an option? Short answer is yes. We've had students go and work for um, minor league baseball teams in the United States, and they've worked for American organization offices here in Canada. So we have two grads right now um, at the National Football League in Canada, which is a small office, about 10 employees, but we've got two grads there. I think actually we might have three now. Um, and a number of our grads go to work at Toronto-based agencies or brand properties that are situated globally and have relationships with um, entities that cross the American border or other borders for that matter, as we get that much more international. Hope that answers your question. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so an, on, an, an anonymous attendee asks the following, I have two pathways for my future, either soccer or electronic music events. Do you have any opportunities for both? Yes, we do. Um, I'd encourage you, um, I can hear in your, your passion, like I reflect to when I was in this program and I was like, I'm going to work in basketball and that's it. Um, I would say, yes, we do. We do have graduates working for um, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment and specifically under the Toronto Argonaut and MLS Toronto FC division. Um, and in terms of uh, music, yes, we've had graduates go work for Universal. Um, they've gone to work for uh, Music Counts Canada in a, in a um, uh, not-for-profit capacity as well. One thing I would encourage everyone to understand, and you will as you learn with myself and my colleagues in this program is, um, and it's a really simple, simple view of the industry is, um, for those of you that are hockey fans out there or cricket fans or soccer fans or baseball fans or music fans, when you watch or you take in a music concert or a sporting event on television um, or in any form of media on your device, you're often going to see interdispersed into that experience rink boards that show a certain brand logo, or you're going to see um, advertising that interdispersed into the content of your experience on an app or in a live event online that is various brands tailoring their message to the confines of the event experience. Those are sport and event marketing hirees as well. So they're as active. So if you look at the Maple Leafs brand, the Toronto Maple Leafs, they may have 15 partners who are active in activating the Toronto Maple Leaf sports brand experience. It's not just the hockey team, it's the brands that are working with the hockey team to bring the hockey team's context to life in the content of how they market their brand. So the opportunities are growing robustly. And so if you want to work in soccer and you want to work for an MLS FC, you may go work for MLS and FC graduating. They may have a job there. They might not right away, but there may be partners they work with or not-for-profits they engage with where you'll be right a part of soccer and working with MLS hand in hand. So it's it's not as linear again or definitive an answer in that way, but your skill set sets you up for that elastic band of stretch opportunities. Good. Uh, so here's, here's a... Uh... Excellent question, I think. Uh, this is from an anonymous attendee. You mentioned entry level roles as the main option after graduation. Have there been situations where there are more experienced individuals landed better jobs or better positions? I guess what, what they're looking at is somewhere higher on the uh, organizational uh, 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 chart. Yeah, so the answer is yes. And some of that has to do with, again, the organization that you're being hired into. It's very rare, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's very rare for, it can happen, so the answer is yes, but it's very rare for an organization to hire someone and then bypass the, the corporate hierarchy they've got in place. And I say that for someone who's got an MBA, PhD, it doesn't matter. You can't often skip the, the, the level of growth within the confines of an organization that is maybe as robust and big as say, for example, I'll just give an example, like uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, okay? Having said that, if you start in the confines of a smaller enterprise or small medium business or a startup, or I've got grads right now working at various um, sport digital digitized platforms and they're going in and becoming a manager quite quickly because they don't have the same 
level of structure that they would go into had they gone into work for a Deloitte and Touche in an event planning capacity. So it it's not, again, a very standardized answer that you're getting here, but that is what a career is. And I can say that as someone who's... <laughs> who's worked in corporate and been on Dragon's Den with a, with a client per se. So I've gone through it in the both ringers and you're, you're welcome to find that on YouTube and you can have a good laugh today if you, if you want to. Um, but so I really want everyone out there to understand that it's not very linear, but the opportunities vary on where the organization is in their life cycle. The, uh, uh, the rise within the uh, organization isn't always vertical. Uh, yep. It can also be lateral as well. Yep. And, and uh, with a uh, smaller organization, uh, you get to wear many hats and that, yep. that's good. Um, and that's where uh, a diverse uh, background really helps. Absolutely. So Christopher asks the following question. Uh, how active are alumni with regards to uh, current students? Is there a way to contact alumni for possible advice? This is a great question. And the answer is unequivocally 150% yes. Our biggest strength and our biggest foundational asset as a, as a, as a program outside of being housed in the George Brown Center for Business, which is a very forward thinking and evolving organization is our alumni base, which stretches for more than 25 years. And I can say with, to you that they are out there because they care, they do their best to um, support us with um, work term opportunities that resonate within their organization and within your career path. They're constantly trying to give back, whether it's work term opportunities, whether it's coming as guest speakers to our speaker series, and they often come back. I've got two alumni teaching on my team um, as instructors. So it's, it's very, very much a holistic blend of um, committed uh, career uh, minded people in the space. Um, and in terms of contacting um, alumni before you start the program, absolutely. I would highly encourage everyone on this call to, um, if they're not on LinkedIn, to join LinkedIn and to look at two active groups that we've got within our alumni network. We've got our five to watch Canada Sports Business Awards group. That's, I, I wanna say now is probably more than 600 members strong. Um, where these are folks that have attended our event and our sport and event alumni and very much cohesively supporting who we are and what we're trying to be. And then secondly is just look through the LinkedIn and see who's graduated from George Brown College in their sport and event under their graduation credentials. There's so many and they are there. And if I know if you reach out to them, they will support you and give you that much more of their time to help guide your decision and your career going forward. So our alumni is our biggest advantage and I can't say enough good things about it being a springboard to help everyone in building their career. Good, thank you. Uh, so this question comes from Arsh. Uh, what has been the um, hiring trend for recent grads in the sports and event marketing program? Has there been change in opportunities being available for a co-op semester? And this kind of lines up with uh, what some, uh, Christopher was asking as well, uh, which says, uh, with the world changing and becoming more and more uh, virtual, uh, what changes have we made to our program other than the speaker series with regards to transitioning over to a virtual world? Uh, so, a remote so, world? Yeah, so the best answer is best I can is uh, absolutely, as has every industry since last May when um, COVID became a, a, a cloud that's getting shinier by the day though. We got to keep optimistic. We got to keep optimistic. So yes, absolutely. The industry shifted, um, education shifted to address the industry needs. And as they shift and change, we're shifting with them and helping lead them to ensure there's cohesion. So the opportunities are definitely coming back more aggressively and have so for the last five months in terms of graduates graduating and being um, that much more um, uh, opportunities increasing that much more for it to be hired right away. Okay. Um, so I would say, yes, the opportunities are growing and virtually what we've done internally to shift is not only the speaker series, of course, everything is instruct has all of the curriculum has been tailored to give a fantastic online journey and online experience, but the other course, our capstone course is the one I should mention out loud um, in that regard that's really specific is we have a class that you take for two semesters, which is an event management course where you actually in the mindset as an entrepreneur create 
with a team, a startup event experience to raise money for a charity partner in the context of sport and event theming. And that has gone 100% virtual at the moment because of obviously um, what is taking place in, in, in our world um, with in terms of in-person events. So that's 100% online, but here's the, the kicker that's amazing. That group of students can now, because they understand how to deliver a virtual event experience under the concept, which hasn't shifted, of an event now have two skill sets coming out of our program. They can do physical event experiences live and they can do virtual events. And then going forward, what I foresee, and certainly this is based on my closeness and tightness with industry, is we see everything being hybrid. So we see everything being in person with amplification digital, which is, which is where I think education is evolving that much more too through the pandemic, as is everything for that regard. So, it's an exciting time. I know that we watch the news and there's lots of, you know, sometimes doom and gloom and this and that, but there could not be a better time to be a part of the change and the shift that's going on. So the learning experience is again, consistent with what you would see in person. And ultimately it's been augmented that much more in certain ways because of the pandemic with the virtual events class, or sorry, with the events class, with the virtual components and your speaker series from a networking perspective. So I'd argue there's been a couple of really good innovations happen within the confines of the curriculum that will then support your journey to industry that much more. Excellent answer. Uh, so like all industries, all sectors, we've had to uh, transition into a remote uh, environment. And uh, I think that's uh, helped everyone, students, faculty, everyone. Uh, here's a question from an anonymous attendee. Is there an interview process for the internship hiring or how do you get placed into the uh, work experience? Great, an or great, an great answer. I haven't given an answer yet. Great, great question. question. <laughs> You're gonna give uh, a great answer. <laughs> um, great question. And in fact, this is where I'm proud to say that our Center for Business team and George Brown as an entire entity as a, as a college franchise has innovated. So there is a uh, four, pronged menu of work term opportunities in play now um, within the Center for Business for you to look at as you bridge into your work term. There's the traditional co-op option, which is a paid term that you would interview for. There is um, uh, a, 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 excuse me, an internship, which again, the difference between internship and co-op is basically just one is paid and one's unpaid, but the the, the context of the experience in working directly for in a hire, being hired and interviewing is in place. And then we have two other um, avenues that are being um, expanded on as we build this holistic menu for you. We have um, <clears throat> a consulting assignment opportunity that is a, is a project-based client route where you would work virtually with partners on consulting assignments in your work term. So you would be working with partners in that capacity. And then last but not least, we also have opportunities now for students who have, they may have a startup organization that they're working on as a hustle side job. And we partner with Start GBC so that you can incubate what you're doing from a startup side in the confines of your work term experience. And I'm, I'm bringing that up because I have a student right now, it's very timely, who's created his own um, digital platform for um, social media that is very much about um, augmenting what the Toronto Raptors are doing at Maple Leaf Sports. And he's working with the Start GBC incubator model to help his startup grow in his work term experience. So four really unique paths, four unique zones of work term experiences to get you ready for industry. And the menu could, be that, could never be that much more robust and the opportunities could never be mu that much more thriving for you to seize the moment. Great. Hope that answers. Yeah. I have one final question and then uh, two comments that were made. Uh, so I'll start with a question that comes from Carlos who asks or, or asks the following. Uh, in the sports and event marketing program, I can also get involved in areas such as finance or project management in sports entities. Can I work in those areas? 100% Carlos, I'm, these are such great questions. And this is the part where as all the collective questions come up about the work term experience and where you're going, I mean, <laughs> we've got grads who have graduated with this 
postgraduate certificate. And because their transferable skills are so robust, that to your point, they've gone to work as project managers for event planning companies or for um, agencies that do sport marketing content in a digital way. They're community managers, for example, for um, digital content roles at sport and event organizations, or they've gone and pursued, um, I'll, I'll give you an example with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'll just put it out there. Kyle Dubas, who is their general manager, and I'm sure everyone out there who is from Canada uh, knows the name Kyle Dubas is the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And he isn't a grad of our program, I don't want to say that, but he is a graduate of Brock who worked his internship into becoming a general manager. And you're not trained to be a general manager of a sport team in a sport management uh, organized or a sport management um, academic journey. One grad from our program, let me just give another example, who just got hired to work for um, the Canadian women, women's national hockey team as an assistant coach. Now, <laughs> I'm not teaching <laughs> hockey um, in the confines of my academics, but this woman pursued a role um, to work for Hockey Canada. And it just so evolved because of her background of being a professional hockey player into a role with the Canadian women's national hockey team going into the Olympics. So she took the experience of our sport and event program and took that business mindset, applied it to her professional athlete upbringing and then is now reapplying it in a, a role beyond the ice. And I've got this semester three professional women's hockey players who are working for not-for-profits doing a similar thing. They finished their career working or being professional women's hockey players um, in certain ways. And now they are pursuing not-for-profit opportunities to utilize the skill set they're getting here. So it's, it's quite exciting um, to see the diversity and organic experiences that are manifesting outside of graduation with the students that we are working with. So thank you, Peter. You're welcome. Uh, that, was, that was our final question. And I'd like to thank everyone for asking those questions. So you've taken the first step by attending the open house um, at, at George Brown College virtual. Uh, and uh, you've also taken the first step on being a successful student and that's engagement. You've taken the, the active role of asking a question. And the question you're asking may not only just help yourself, but others uh, who are with us as well. Um, and uh, maybe that's the same question that they have on their minds. Uh, and not only that, you've made connections with Peter uh, while asking your questions. And speaking of which, you know, if you ever get into one of uh, uh, Peter's uh, uh, courses, I would encourage you to please uh, mentioned that you met Peter uh, during uh, the open house. I'm sure that he'll he'll uh, appreciate that very much, as he will with the following comments. Absolutely. Anonymous attendee says the following: Hi, Phil and Peter. Not a question, just an appreciation post. Very, very helpful. Thank Quick you. Big smiles. So thank you very thank you much. For that. And this one comes from our director of operations, Jackie Tan, who says, and she dropped in on us. Uh, thank you, Peter and Philip. Great sharing. Um, that's, I think that's what uh, caps it all because that's what we're here for. Uh, we're here to share our knowledge, our experience uh, with our students to help them uh, in their next stage of their uh, uh, lives and careers. So again, I want to thank you for attending. Um, have a great day. Uh, we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. And um, uh, if you have any questions, reach out to Peter um, and I'm sure he'll get right back to you. Absolutely. And I'd also encourage everyone to go to our website and take a look at the sport and event marketing overview of the curriculum with a nice video there that shows some grads uh, in action at the Canadian Olympic Committee. And as well to look at 5 towatchca an event that is very much a part of the George Brown Sport and Event Learning Experience. And Google is a great search to Google the program, Google myself, go on, you know, continue to build that. And as for those folks, as you get ready to come to school, one of the great things you can do is use the research tools that are there to get to know the colleagues and the experience that much more and the community that is waiting for you at George Brown College. Okay, good. Thank you everyone again for attending. Uh, this concludes our webinar for today. Thank you everyone.